So Obito Uchiha, a character that's beloved from all over the world, from his spiral mask to his nine tail mask and finally the Renny Sharingan mask, today we're going to take a deep dive in exploring the iconic mask of Obito Uchiha, from the beloved Naruto series and why each of them play an important factor into shaping his character as a whole. Let's begin by unraveling the mystery behind the spiral mask, also widely known as the swirl mask, the first mask Obito Uchiha ever wore. It's mesmerizing. The spiraling vortex design is an insane well done visual representation and a direct reference to his incredibly powerful Kamui technique, which granted him the ability to transport objects between dimensions. The mask's appearance also bears a striking resemblance to Tobi, the peculiar white Zetsu who played a pivoted role in helping with Obito's recovery after his near-death experience. While wearing this mask, Obito primarily relied heavily on using Kamui in combat scenarios, rarely resorting to or using more traditional ninjutsu techniques. Initially, the mask maintained a plain white color, but Obito later made the artistic decision to paint it orange, potentially due to either personal aesthetic preference or an underlying symbolic connection to the prejudiced Uzumaki clan's iconic emblem. The funny, comedic, and almost clownish persona that Tobi portrayed was the complete opposite of Obito's true cold-hearted and brooding self, which made many fans theorize that he potentially is suffering from identity disorder or is just really good at hiding his true identity. Regardless of the motivation behind Behind his act, the spiral mask proved to be an incredible effective tool in concealing Obito's true identity for a significant span of time. Chronologically speaking, the Nine Tails mask was actually the first disguise that the mysterious Obito Uchiha wore. So basically, the order in which his mask appear has different timelines more confusing than the Fate series. Its distinct brown color and intricate Nine Tailed design served as a really good representation of Obito's single-minded ambition and unwavering determination to successfully capture and harnessed the immense power of the nine-tailed beast Kurama. Obito outright wore this mask during several important events throughout the Naruto timeline. This includes the infamous Uchiha clan massacre as well as his risky attempt to forcibly extract Kurama from Kushina just after Naruto's birth. Although Minato managed to put an end to Obito's schemes, it was at the tragic cost of sacrificing his own life along with Kushina's. It's also important to know that the nine-tails mask itself did not possess any unique special abilities. It existed solely as a symbolic embodiment of Obito's aspirations and endgame of achieving the hypothetical infinite Tsukunomi technique. He even tried to impersonate and pay tribute to the legendary Madara Uchiha. And that's why Obito underwent a striking physical transformation where he grew out his hair to match Madara's. But he still cut it once again for completely unknown reasons. Still though, the Nine Tails mask was just really cool, especially since it was his first one. Obito's final and arguably most iconic mask took form of the fearsome Renny Sharingan mask, which he wore during the fourth great ninja war. This mask's unique and instantly recognizable design has two distinct eye holes to accommodate Obito's two dojitsus, as well as an ominous third tomei that was on its forehead. In my opinion, this served as the representation of his obsession and all-consuming ambition to unlock the ultimate power of the Renny Sharingan so that he can activate the infinite Tsukunomi. There's also a really neat easter egg where if you look close enough, you can see the patterns and symbols on Obito's mask were inspired by the design of Kaguya Otsutsuki herself. Just look at the tendril-like markings that sort of resemble Kaguya's iconic forehead crest to the spiral that marks the infinite Tsukunomi moon. It really feels like every aspect of this mask's appearance seemed to foreshadow how Obito just wanted to rework the entire shinobi world. After finally acquiring the legendary Renegon, Obito can use its immense power to access the six path techniques. However, and ironic enough, the high highlight of this mask is when Naruto through sheer determination managed to destroy it with a high velocity Rasengan, finally shattering his disguise and dramatically unveiling Obito's true identity to shellshock Kakashi his former ally and friend. This unmasking paved the way for a bittersweet reunion battle between the two as they contemplated how their once indestructible bond descended into darkness. From a promising young shinobi full of erotic ideals and youthful pride to an utterly tormented formidable antagonist who wants to achieve the perfect world through countless sacrifice. Obito Uchiha's sad and multi-layered journey into becoming a villain is undoubtedly one of the best narratives in all of Naruto. Each distinctive mask that he wore and designed as he went on his journey served as a physical representation of his evolving motivations, personas, and ideological outlook of the world. That ends my video on all Obito's masks. If you liked it, make sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell for more videos like this one, and I'll see you in the next one.